Hello again, I'm Father Pepe, and we're continuing our reflection, and now our, we'll begin our prayer on the two standards. Hopefully by now you've had a chance to look at your notes and your journal to remember the experience of service, and hopefully you have looked at it uh, with the eyes of these two standards and hopefully by now you will also have a printed uh, sheet or a PDF of the structure of prayer that we will be following. You don't need to look at it that's just for your uh, future prayer that you can follow uh, the structure of prayer that uh, we have, that we will be doing today. If you have been sitting for a while, I'll ask you all to please stand up. And uh, so Ignatius recommends that we begin our prayer, and as we're sitting down. We become aware of the presence of God, thinking that we're coming from somewhere else. So, uh, but just to do a transition, sometimes it helps to stand up and then sit down. And um, Ignatius recommends that, in this, that the first steps uh, would be always the same, the first four that we will follow. The first one is to prepare what we're going to pray about. So we did that by looking over the material, as we did in the previous video. The next uh, four steps will consist in uh, first um, recognizing that God is looking at, at us, then preparing our body, then doing what Ignatius uh, calls the preparatory prayer, which is to offer this moment for God. Then we'll do uh, several points to, to get us... Uh, to the place of the contemplation, get us ready, and then we'll focus on the specific points uh, that are the center of the prayer to finish with a colloquy, which is a conversation with God. So that's the structure of prayer. And finally, we'll have some time to uh, journal and uh, review our prayer. So as we're standing up, let's take a moment to become aware of God's gaze upon us. We are currently being loved and seen by God. And just to take a moment to be aware of that, it's very important. And we begin in the name and in the presence of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's take a seat with this awareness. For those of you that have uh, lower back pain or that have been sitting for long stretches of time, you may also, you may also um, wanna remain standing in a comfortable position, perhaps with your back against a wall. And now we will prepare our body and we'll do what is called progressive relaxation. And let's uh, first uh, become aware of our breathing. Let's take a deep breath. Hold it. And let it go. We empty completely our lungs. And hold it. And one more time, take a deep breath. Fill up our lungs, keep them really filled, hold it, and let it go. Let all the air out completely, hold it, and one more time, take a deep breath, fill it up, hold it, and let it go. And we continue breathing normally. 
And now we will relax all of our body, starting from the tip of our toes. Mm -hmm. Have your feet firmly against the ground, your back as straight as possible. It should do its normal arc, but uh, try to keep your head Rest it on your back, on your column. This is important if you rest your head against the wall or against a chair or against anything, it's very easy to fall asleep. And if you tilt your head forward and, for example, put, put it against your hands, uh, it will create uh, a strain in your neck. So it's best to have it completely straight and resting on your shoulders and your back. So let's begin with our tippy toes. Let's tense them and then relax. And try to notice the difference and let them completely relax. Let's do the same with our calves. We put pressure on them and then release and become aware of the relaxation. Try to leave them as relaxed as they can. The front muscles in front of our calves. Let's, let's raise our feet and then we let go of that pressure and leave them re completely relaxed. Put a little bit of pressure in the back of our legs and let go and leave it completely relaxed. A little bit of pressure in the front of your legs and let go and leave it completely relaxed. Now our stomach, we push it in and we release the tension. As we breathe, it's important that we breathe not raising our chest, but with the upper part of our stomach. What should be raising up is uh, that space between our rib cage and our belly button. Experts say that this is the way to get most air into our lungs so we completely keep our stomach relaxed there's no need to show off there's no need to show off your abs at this point we're in the presence of god we're praying we have our eyes closed your back put a little bit of pressure in the back and let it completely relax finally your shoulders bring them together and at the count of three, let them go. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it three times. One more time. We'll bring them together. At the count of three, we let it go. One, two, and three. One well, last time, we bring our shoulders together. At the count of three, we let it go. One, two, and three. Very good. And now, our um, neck, we'll move it to the right, we'll move it to the left, keep it in the center, and make it as relaxed as possible. And now for our face, we will do a funny face, bring all of our muscles together, race and face. And at the count of three, we let all the muscles relax in our face one, two, and three. And we continue breathing. With our body relaxed, now we offer God this moment. Lord, may this moment be completely for you that everything we do 
think and pray about be completely for your glory. This is what Ignatius recommends to do, to be in every prayer. And you can see that this is a very enjoyable process. So by all means, continue it after this day of reflection. We will go into the first prelude, or the introduction to this prayer in particular. And first we will look at the, the story Here it is to consider how Christ calls and wishes all persons to come under his standard, under his kingdom, under his banner. And how Lucifer in opposition calls them under his banner. This is the crux of the story. God desires, Christ desires all persons to come under his standard and Lucifer in opposition under his. Second, we will imagine the place. This is what Ignatius calls the composition of place. And here will be to imagine First, a great plain in the region of Jerusalem. Ignatius says, well, it could be anywhere where we consider uh, beautiful and holy. A great plain where the supreme commander of the good people is Christ our Lord. And it's beautiful as the expression of Christ, who is beautiful. And in another plane, kind of an ugly and desolate place, we imagine the region of what Ignatius imagines as Babylon, but it could be anywhere, where uh, we might see that the leader is the enemy of Christ, which is Lucifer. Imagine this place, dark and desolate. And the third prelude is to ask for what I deeply desire to get out of this prayer. The desire here is uh, proposed by Ignatius and is to ask for insight into the deceits of the evil leader and for help to guard myself against them and further for insight into the genuine life which the supreme and truthful commander sets forth and the grace to imitate him. I can uh, ask for this grace in my own words. inside into the deceits of the evil leader so that I may guard myself against them and inside into the genuine life that Christ sets forth and the grace to imitate him because he goes before us. And now we will look at the first uh, standard, the first side, and that is uh, the standard of Satan. And we imagine how the leader of all the enemy in that great plain of Babylon
He is seated on a throne of fire and smoke. Imagine this leader seated in this big throne, this ornate, authoritative chair, and we see a throne of fire and smoke. How does that look like? The fire representing the pain, the smoke, the confusion. It says, in, in an aspect, horrible and terrifying. So we imagine this leader past the smoke as he truly is and we see all his ugliness and his uh, strength in this ugliness is terrifying we consider how he summons and brings devils we can imagine his uh, minions what they would look like this uh, evokes images perhaps of uh, the Lord of the Rings or uh, movies like this uh, and he disperses them some to one city and others to another and throughout the whole world without missing any provinces places states or individual persons and we see the places we've visited we've see, we see our city as one of those places see our state it's one of the, one of those states but not the only one and we see the people suffering this rain of fire and smoke of pain and confusion so the third point we consider the address he makes to them And how he admonishes them to set up snares and chains on people. How first they should tempt people to covet riches. As he usually does in most cases. So that uh, they may more easily come to vain honor for the world. And finally, to surging a pride or a haughty heart. In this way, the first step is to riches, the second to honor, and the third is pride. And from these three steps, the enemy entices them to all the other vices. We perhaps imagine 
everyone along the chain of command, everyone in those provinces, places, states, all the persons who have been lured, snared, and chained to the search, insatiable search for riches, this search to be honored, and ultimately that are chained to their own pride. And we see how this is actually a destructive kingdom. Now we look at the second part. We look at the standard of Christ. In contrast, we gaze in our imagination on the supreme and true leader who is Christ our Lord. First, we consider how Christ our Lord takes his place in that great plane that we imagined earlier. In Jerusalem, near Jerusalem or a different place. In an area which is lowly, beautiful, and attractive. And we imagine how this place represents who Christ is. Lowly, beautiful, and attractive. We consider how the Lord of all the world chooses so many persons, apostles, disciples, and the like. And he sends them throughout the whole world to spread his doctrine among people of every state and condition. This is a personal call. Third, we consider the address which Christ makes to all his servants and friends whom he is sending in this expedition, in this heroic quest. He recommends that they endeavor to aid all persons by attracting them first to the most spiritual poverty. And also, if the Divine Majesty should be served and should wish to choose them for it, even to no less degree of actual poverty. attracting them to the freedom that comes 
from not living for the purpose of creating wealth, but for the purpose of love, for the purpose of building Christ's kingdom on earth, that they may be happy and their happiness may not depend on material things. And second, by attracting them to our desire for reproaches and contempt, as we were saying, we could also include here attracting them to being vulnerable, attracting them to accept not being appreciated and the experiences of public shame even that may come from my humanity, my limitations and my sins. <laughs> Second, by attracting them to a desire of reproaches and contempt. Opprobium, vulnerability, accepting, not being appreciated. Since from this results humility. In this way, there will be three steps. First, poverty in opposition to riches. Second, reproaches or contempt, vulnerability in opposition to honor from the world. And the third, humility in opposition to pride. Then, from these three steps, they should induce people to all the other virtues. We hear this address, we consider it. And now let's uh, take a moment to have a conversation with God about this. We speak to God honestly and we let Christ respond to us also honestly. Is the Christ we know from Scripture, the Christ whom we've known over all of our lives, who wants our true life, Take a few moments just to speak and listen.
Ignatius recommends that we take a moment in this space of conversation to ask God, ask Jesus, Mary, that we may be called to be part of this enterprise, that we may be chosen to spiritual poverty and to even actual poverty. May be called and be able to receive those things that might come to us with vulnerability, to bear those reproaches and injuries, this opprobrium, this public shame that might come from being human, that through them we may imitate Christ more. That through them we may change people's hearts through love We finish with an Our Father. Everybody might say it at their own volume that we, they may be comfortable with as, they, as we come out of this prayer. We begin moving our toes and our fingers as we say, Our Father art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen we finish in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we take uh, just a couple of minutes to come out of this beautiful experience of encounter with God. And uh, there are some questions in your uh, sheet that you can answer. Uh, those might help you. Remember and record the experience so that um, you may draw fruit from it in the future. I'll leave you in good hands and uh, may this continue to be a blessed day. God bless.